Good morning, everyone, and thank you for starting your day off with me. I'm Jenna Stauffer. I'm excited to do a lot of listening today because my guest this morning is nationally recognized motivational speaker, Pat Croce. His name is obviously not a secret down here in the Keys. He's inspired, motivated so many people, not just here, but across our country. Throughout his life, he has accomplished so much from owning the Philadelphia 76ers to becoming a best-selling author to even starting the world's first authentic pirate museum. One of the things, though, that I'd say I like best about him is that through his speaking engagements, his TV appearances, his businesses, and his books, he is determined to motivate the masses to reach their full potential and realize their dreams. Pat, thank you so much well, for being Jenna, with me this morning. Thank you for that introduction. <laughs> no, it was a very easy to do because you have such a long list of accomplishments. And I've been reading a lot about you, Pat, and one of the things that struck out to me right from the beginning was that you got your start delivering newspapers door to door. That's correct. When I was six year, 16, when I was sixth grade, okay. I was 11 years old. I was supposed to be 12. I lied on the little application <laughs> because I didn't have any money. And so my father put me to work early and it was delivering papers on a daily route every day, right after school, go pick up your, I think I had about 55 papers, yeah. and then you have to collect the money, and if you did it well, you got tips. So it was all about customer service at a mm -hmm. young age. You learned a lot. You learned how to smile to people, how to put their paper in plastic when it was raining. You know, it's funny, I haven't talked about delivering papers <laughs> forever. So you've never done it since. <laughs> uh, I've delivered a lot of other things since, but not newspapers. All right, and that was in Philadelphia? That was outside Philadelphia, correct. All right, and so after the delivering papers, what was your next step, Pat? Well, obviously school, and then I went away to college. I went to Westchester University outside Philadelphia first, but it was really just to play football. Mm -hmm. I was a phys ed major, but I knew I didn't want to be a phys ed, physical education teacher. I got hooked. My mom was a nurse. And I did some volunteer work at a hospital, and I like this physical therapy. At the time, it's not what it is today. And so I thought, wow, here's physical fitness, and I was always a fitness nut, with medicine. So I went away to University of Pittsburgh and became a physical therapist, and I also got a second degree in athletic training. And it was almost like trainers and physical therapists, sheep herders and uh, wolf tamers, they hated each other. So I had both degrees. Mm -hmm. And then I helped, along the time, create what you now know as sports medicine. Mm -hmm. So that was your, that definitely is what you're so well known for. Is really is sports path. medicine. As a physical therapist back in my earlier life, I helped create first one center and then two centers and then three centers and four centers up to 40 centers across the country. But it was different. It wasn't where you were in the basement of the hospital because you blew out your knee or hurt your back. We treat the mind as well as the body because mm -hmm. you're in pain. Mm -hmm. So we had to make you believe that what we gave you, your prescription, your exercises, we're going to make you feel better. And that's what I've been doing every day is touching people to make them feel better, whether it's our bar restaurants here in Key West or going out and giving a talk. Mm -hmm. Now, when did the 76ers come into play? Uh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. I was a physical therapist for the team in 1983, 84. Charles Barkley. Mm -hmm. I the round, Charles Barkley. Down, the rebound. <laughs> it was my job to get him looking svelte. <laughs> so I had to get him down from 300 down to 255. Wow. And we did. Mm -hmm. I mean, he wasn't happy camper at the time, but I love Charles. And mm -hmm. that was about 84, 85. And so the, the owner of the team knew me. At the same time, I was a conditioning coach, physical therapist for the Philadelphia Flyers, the hockey team, while I was building my centers. And then about 95, I had a conversation with the owner. Mm -hmm. I'd sold my centers in 93, and it's... it's old adage, relationships determines results. I had a relationship with the former owner, mm -hmm. so he had took a lunch with me. Mm -hmm. And when I went to the lunch, I said, sell me 10% of the team. Let me buy some of the team, because the team was awful. Mm -hmm. Philadelphia fans were booing him in mm -hmm. public. Philadelphia fans aren't the most patient bunch. Right. <laughs> I mean, you either win or you better leave right. town. Right. And so he said, now, Pat, when I sell, it's going to be all or nothing. So I went and got a partner, Comcast. Mm -hmm. They became my partner in this, and so it took a while, half a year, to marinate this stew that became an ownership. And I only owned a small piece, but I wanted to run it. You wanted to run it. And so the next five years, it took it from worst to first on a glorious, fabulous journey where we lost in the finals <laughs> in 2001 to Shaq and Kobe. I hate Shaq. <laughs> well, we're going to talk more about this. We're going to take a quick break right now, but don't go away because I'll be back with you right after these messages. Stay with us. 